get started, I want to thank everybody for being in attendance. My name is Jillian Howard, and I'm the chairperson for the City of Tampa Women's History Month Committee. This is our 19th annual celebration, and since our inception in 1997, we have recognized the many accomplishments of female City of Tampa employees, as well as the contributions to women across our world. With continued support, we hope to keep doing so. Thank you for attending today, and we hope you enjoy the program. Before I introduce our mistress of ceremonies, there is a special presentation of flowers by a young man named Keith Aniston to our Josephine Howard Memorial Award recipient, Gwen Miller. Thank you, Keith. And now it is with sincere pleasure that I introduce our Mistress of Ceremonies. Shirley Fox Knowles earned her Bachelor's of Science degree in accounting from Florida A&M University. Mrs. Fox Knowles has held the position of city clerk since her appointment by Mayor Pam Iorio in May of 2013. Oh, sorry, 2003, excuse me. However, prior to her appointment, she was recruited by GTE of Florida to work in their Tampa office as an accountant and administrator, where she worked for 16 years. Additionally, she served for seven years as the development director for the Tampa Hillsboro Urban League. While in this capacity, she worked to raise funds to restore the historic West Tampa Central Espanol building and also worked to develop housing for low to moderate income families in the East Tampa area. In 2012, she won the prestigious National Forum of Black Public Administrators Florida Chapter Mark of Excellence Award and the Black Women Business Owners, Executives, and Entrepreneurs in the Spotlight Woman of the Year Award and other awards and recognitions. It suffice to say that she is just as impressive in person as she is on paper, and so it is without further introduction that I ask you to please help me welcome our Mistress of Ceremonies, Shirley Fox Knowles. Thank you, Jillian. Good morning, everyone, and again, welcome to today's program. I am honored to be here this morning. In 1987, Congress officially declared the month of March as Women's History Month. In keeping with this year's theme, our community is and will continue weaving the stories of women's lives into the development of, gro of growth in our city, state, nation, and world. It is because of the unwavering determination and dedicated activism for gender equality by the charismatic women of the past that present and future generations can aspire to any heights. Now to begin the program, I ask you please stand for the presentation of colors by members of the MacDill Air Force Base Honor Guard, followed by our national anthem sung by Sonia Bryson. We will conclude with the Pledge of Allegiance and an inspirational message from Lindsay Kalka. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight? 
night's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in our gate proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled In the words of Janet Bartram Thomas, from age beyond time, proudly earthbound, comes a woman with her sister. Unceremoniously she weaves minutes and fleeting hours, heartaches and brief triumphs, joys and the eternal ache into the humble warp and woof of all over everyday rhythms, the makeshift tumblings and sand shifting plans of life itself. Her colors are the grays of grief, the deafening darks of unknowing, gentle shades of soft words deep and strong in the thick night. One strand reaches a woman's old heart, another holds a child's wild fear. In her rich tapestry, there is time to throw a balancing thread across the steady of pride and ageless man. This woman knows the hues of sunrises and holy tears, the blend and harmonies of shared laughter and tender friends. She catches with her ceaseless shuttle, flecks of joy and patches of fun, interspersing them tirelessly with life's monotones and bland uniformities. Her gallant loom and woman's light have captured for every one of us the simple glorious beauty, the transforming power of awe, and life's eternal fabric. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, in addition to their important contributions to this event, we recognize the Honor Guard, Technical Sergeant Bryson, and the men and women of the Armed Forces for their courageous and committed service to our country. Thank you. We also thank Lindsay Kalka for those inspirational words. Lindsay is a member of the Mayor's Youth Corps, class of 2015. She's a Tampa native, currently in her sophomore year at the Academy of Holy Names. As an athlete and academic, Lindsay is involved in cross country and track and field, and she mentors, mentors middle school students through the teen council at her school. She's also a member of Best Buddies. Lindsay's hobbies include reading, creative design, traveling, and problem solving. While she has yet to decide on a career path, Lindsay is looking forward to the experiences garnered this year as a me uh, member of the Mayor's Youth Corps. She views her participation as an opportunity to explore the prospects of her life while serving her community. We wish her 
the very best in her exploration and hope for a promising future. Now this year's theme, weaving the stories of women's lives, invokes a sense of solidarity with the women of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, in addition to perpetuating a legacy that expands the frontiers of possibility. During the past year, we saw the appointment of the first woman to chair the Board of Governors for the Federal Reserve System, the first woman to achieve the rank of four-star admiral in the Navy, and who can forget Monet Davis, the first girl to pitch the winning game in the Little League World Series and the only Little Leaguer ever to land on the cover, national cover, mind you, of Sports Illustrated. Our histories and background may be diverse, but our cause is the same, to inspire girls and women to achieve their full potential. While we honor the female first, it is our responsibility to ensure that they are not the last. Sadly, we mourn the loss of notable women of our community, like former city councilwoman Helen Chavez. Mrs. Chavez was a champion of women's right, rights and a great role model for women. She was the embodiment of the things a woman can accomplish when holding steadfast to her beliefs. To the many women still among us and those who have passed, we thank you. And now to bring us greetings on behalf of Tampa City Council is Councilwoman Lisa Monteleone, representing District 7. The Councilwoman has been a resident of Hillsborough County for 26 years and of District 7 for 12. She graduated from the University of South Florida in the year 2000 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in interdisciplinary social sciences concentrating in public administration, urban studies, and social work. Councilwoman Monteleone comes from a diverse work background, having been employed with construction, development, bank, and county entities. Mm -hmm. She is a part of the City of Tampa's Green Ordinance Committee, in addition to several other green-driven organizations and initiatives. Please help me and welcome Councilwoman Lisa Monteleone. Thank you and good morning. It's fabulous to see so many people here. I, I wish we had this many people attend our council meetings. <laughs> well, you know, standing here today and looking around the room and seeing so many accomplished women and so many women who have fought for the right to take their place among society, whether it's in government or whether it's in business or whether it's in education and working towards mm -hmm. having those equal rights, which we still do not have across the board in this day and age. We're looking back to the examples that were set by these women, but yet we're looking forward to see what we can accomplish and how we can help each other move our city and our county and our state and our, dare I say it, Washington, um, in a forward movement. Uh, when you look around and see how many women are actually in elected office, we are making ground. We are becoming a regular feature in the hallways but I remember hearing the stories of how in Congress there were no women's bathrooms when the first woman took office in Washington and how we still have disparities in different industries. I worked, as Ms. Fox Knowles mentioned, in the construction industry and there were many times where I would show up to a project and they would ask for my boss. And I said, I don't know, it's not my turn to watch. I don't know where he is. Well, aren't we conducting an inspection? Well, yes, we are conducting the inspection, and as soon as you stop talking to me, we can get this done and over with. So it, it's, it still presents, in this day and age, uh, an issue that women have to deal with. And I, I'm sorry to say that we do, but looking back 
and knowing the struggles that women who have come before us have dealt with, we are more than well equipped to deal with the struggles that we have today. So I want to thank the members of the committee for putting this uh, ceremony together. I want to thank all of the women who have come before this body and presented, whether it be for um, a neighborhood issue or whether it be for a workforce issue, whatever is in your heart when you come before this council to speak, you will be listened to. So thank you very much. And at this time, I would like to present this commendation. Come on up here. Um, in recognition of the City of Tampa's Women's History Month <coughs> celebration on March 18th, 2015, the City of Tampa Council is proud to recognize the effort put forth by the 2015 Women's History Month Celebration Planning Committee. Women's History Month is declared nationwide to highlight mm -hmm. contributions of women in our nation's history and contemporary society. It is a time set aside to honor the pioneers and activists that have made notable strides for equality and who serve as an inspiration for women to achieve its full potential. Thank you very much Thank for the work that you do and continue the working hard, and um, we all are supportive. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Monteleone. We really appreciate that. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge our elected officials, previous Josephine Howard Stafford Award recipients, and other special guests. The elected officials include, and it, it, would you stand when I uh, call your name, former city council member, Mary Alvarez. <laughs> former city council and former Stafford Award honoree, Catherine Broger. Craig Latimer, uh, Supervisor of Elections. <laughs> Council Member Mike Suarez. <laughs> Former State Senator and current County uh, Commissioner Les Miller. <laughs> and I would like to move on to some of our special guests. Julie Stafford, daughter of Josephine Howard Stafford. <laughs> and Digna Alvarez, representing uh, Senator Bill Nelson. <laughs> the former Stafford Award recipients in the audience include jo Joanne uh, Tronco Sadik. Police Chief Jane Castor, <laughs> Kathy Bettencourt, <laughs> and Francis Henriquez, former city clerk. <laughs> if there are any other current or former elected officials in the audience whose name was not mentioned, we apologize. Please stand so that we may recognize you at this time. Okay, we have everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It is now with honor that I introduce the City of Tampa's Chief Financial Officer, Mrs. Sonia Little. Appointed in May 2011, she serves as the Administrator for the Revenue and Finance Department. Prior to joining the city, Sonia served as managing director with the Public Resources Advisory Group for three years and vice president with the RBC Capital Markets and William R. Huff and Company for over 14 years. During this time, she served as either financial advisor or investment banker to numerous governmental agencies on over $6 billion, that's with a B in tax exempt and taxable financing. She has extensive experience analyzing governmental financing, financial statements and operating and capital budgets. 
Sonia has successfully developed numerous strategic financial plans that provide effective solutions for funding capital projects while satisfying federal, state, local, and regulatory guidelines. Sonia earned a BS in business from the University of South Florida. She enjoys a fulfilling life with her husband, Robert, and sons, Isaiah and Jordan. P bringing greetings, please welcome our Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Sonia Little. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's certainly an honor to be here this morning, uh, especially uh, in light of this wonderful event before us. As a woman and City of Tampa employee, I often share with, uh, with various audiences how proud I am to be a part of this organization. I have the opportunity of speaking with folks na nationwide as we represent and tell the City of Tampa's story. And I can tell you that I have no problem telling the nation how awesome we are here at the city of Tampa. That being said, we are awesome because of the many leaders that have gone before us, in particular in light of this particular celebration, uh, the women who have gone before us, the women who have laid out a path for us, left a legacy, and really taken on many of the challenges that we don't have to endure today as women. They have set examples for us, and they have really, really created opportunities beyond measure for us. So for that, I personally am eternally grateful for those who have gone before. Looking forward to a bright future ahead for all of us here at the City of Tampa as well. That being said, I extend greetings to each of you on behalf of Mayor Bob Buckhorn. Uh, he expresses his deepest regrets for not being able to be here today. Um, after this event was scheduled, he was called away to do business on behalf of the city to Washington, D.C., and I believe right now he's actually in flight back to the city. Um, we couldn't get him back here early enough, so I'm sorry you have to deal with me today. <laughs> but it is, with, again, with great honor. The mayor has asked that I present on his behalf a proclamation. And if you'll bear with me, I would love to read this entire proclamation because it says so much to the spirit of today's event. Whereas the United States Congress has named the month of March as Women's History Month in special recognition of the many contributions women have made to our country's history and heritage. <coughs> and whereas the city of Tampa is proud to join in the nation's celebration of Women's History Month and this year's theme, weaving the stories of women's lives, highlights the individual and collective accounts of remarkable women and proven essential to the fabric of our nation's history and Whereas in keeping with the tradition of recognizing excellence and service to the city of Tampa, the Josephine Howard Stafford Memorial Award has been established to be given annually to, the cur to a current or former city of Tampa female employee who is a pioneer in her profession or excels in a field or level where women are underrepresented and has demonstrated outstanding commitment to her position and community involvement. And whereas the Josephine Howard Stafford Memorial Award for 2015 is presented to the Honorable Gwendolyn Gwen Miller in recognition of her commitment to the city of Tampa and her many efforts on behalf of citizens of our community and Whereas the first African-American woman elected to Tampa City Council, Mrs. Miller served with distinction from 1995 through 2011, and during her tenure, she served as chair from 2003 to 2007, and chair pro tem from 1998 through 2003, and again in 2007, until her retirement in 2011. During her time of service on Tampa City Council, Mrs. Miller 
was well known for her dedication to developing and strengthening the community's youth and families through education, recreation, and social opportunities. Mrs. Miller led many neighborhood initiatives, including funding for renovation of the Belmont Heights Little League and the community centers for Woodland Terrace and Williams Park on April 11, 2011. Her dedication and commitment to the city of Tampa and community make her truly deserving of this honor. Whereas this recognition will be officially announced on Wednesday, March 18, 2015 at the 19th Annual City of Tampa Women's History Month celebration held in Tampa City Council Chambers. Now, therefore, the mayor, Bob Buckhorn, has proclaimed the month of March 2015 as Women's History Month. So if you will, please join me in paying tribute to our very own Gwendolyn Miller, but also naming this as Women's History Month, and we'll continue on with additional celebration for our honoree as the program continues. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. We now enter the awards portion of our program. Today, we are truly excited to be partnering with McDill Air Force Base and recognizing very special women. To introduce the distinguished award recipients and representing McDill Air Force Base is Colonel Andre Brier, Vice Wing Commander. The wing's overall mission is to provide the worldwide air refueling and combatant commander airlift support in addition to the support of U.S. Central Command, U.S. Special Operations, and 36 other mission partners stationed at McDill. The city of Tampa is pleased to have these men and women also called Tampa their home. Please join me in welcoming Colonel Briere. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, distinguished city and, and federal officials, friends from McDill, uh, it's an honor to be representing uh, the base. Uh, and, and all 19,000 people that come to work on McDill every day. We're, we're a city within a city, as, as uh, Mayor Buckhorn uh, likes to say. And uh, I do follow him on Facebook. And I, <laughs> I saw a picture yesterday that I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was spending some time with our president. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so little St. Patrick's Day meeting with the president and, and I believe the ambassador from Ireland. So, right. yeah. So we, we miss him, and, and we certainly are honored to be part of this ceremony with you today. If you'll allow me uh, just a brief uh, introduction of, of what uh, we do as a military uh, in, in advancing women's issues. Uh, we are more diverse today than we've ever been in the United States military. It's your military. Uh, we truly uh, represent America, and I'm pleased to announce that our, our Secretary of the Air Force, who's our second female Secretary of the Air Force in our history, uh, announced a fairly sweeping diversity initiative last just last week. Uh, and that's going to increase the representation of women in our force by about a third. So we are, we are making strides and we're honored uh, to do so and uh, excited that, that uh, we have pay equality in our military. So. <laughs> Just saying. <That's> all. <laughs> we have council too. <laughs> <laughs> well, now to why I'm up here, and I'm really pleased to announce our first honoree, who's our civilian honoree. We'll be, we'll be uh, honoring two outstanding women from McDill today. Our first honoree is Miss Nicole Tompkins. She's from the 310th Airlift Squadron at McDill. Uh, they fly the uh, Gulfstream 5s that, that take our four-star generals around the world doing their very important mission. And she has a very important mission to keep that unit going. 
Uh, she authored a new awards process uh, timeline uh, for the squadron. It doesn't mean anything to you. It's a big deal for us. It's how our folks get promoted. Uh, she invested 96 hours and volunteered that time to local hospice patients and family members. And she also uh, served as a squadron spouse network liaison. And for those of you, again, who don't know what that is, uh, our spouses are, are the unpaid cornerstone of our military. Um, she was the liaison to them. And when our service members, whether they be male or female, deploy, uh, our spouse network keeps things together, supports each other. They're a family when, when their loved one uh, is away. So she is the cornerstone for that. And it's uh, with great pleasure that uh, I introduce her to the podium. And I'd like to present her with the 2015 MacDill Air Force Base Civilian Woman of the Year Award. So Ms. Nicole Tompkins. And as uh, Nicole's making her way back, I will introduce our military recipient of this award, and that is Senior Master Sergeant Angela Suafoa uh, of our 6th Medical Group, Aerospace Medicine Squadron. Uh, she, probably her biggest accomplishment, which again will mean nothing to you, but means a lot to us, she was uh, one of our leads for Corona. What Corona is, is every four-star general in the Air Force, and there are a lot of them, come to McDill every year to discuss really key issues that affect our service and they make decisions. It's a big deal. It's a huge project. And uh, she was one of the leads on that this year. She's also uh, really the key person who is ushering through our half million dollar ambulance contract. Uh, she is doing that. She's uh, a speaker for the Daughters of the American Revolution, an alpha house. Um, and she helped raise $12,000 for homeless and pregnant women through that, those organizations. She's also an Honor Flight Project Officer. For any of you who haven't been to Honor Flight, either at St. Pete or at the other airports that comes to, I'd encourage you to do so. Wonderful ceremonies welcoming back uh, World War II veterans who get to go visit the World War II Memorial in D.C. They come back, they do that all in one day, and it's just a heart-melting experience if you haven't done it and she is one of our leads for that program as well. So again, it is with great honor that I introduce Senior Master Sergeant Angela Sue Foet. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for having us here today. Thank you, Colonel Breer, and congratulations to the MacDear Air Force Base honorees. I understand that uh, Councilwoman Yvonne Yoli Capine is here. Want you recognize her? We now present a very special part of our program, the presentation of the Josephine Howard Stafford Memorial Award. This award was established in 1997 to honor a current or former City of Tampa female employee who demonstrates outstanding commitment to her position and the community. The award recognizes a woman who is a pioneer in her profession or excels in a career field or professional level where women are underrepresented. The award is given in memory of Mrs. Stafford who devoted 24 years to the city of Tampa as an assistant city attorney and was an advocate for women's issues, both professionally and in the community. We are very pleased to share the news that on May 8th, Josephine Howard Stafford will be inducted into the Hillsborough County Women's Hall of Fame. Joining our honoree, <laughs> Thank you. 
Joining our honoree, Gwen Miller, and past recipient, Mayor Sandy Friedman. Prior to the formal presentation of the award, and as a glimpse into the history of this year's recipient's life, we have a special video presentation. It will be followed by a brief introduction from our 2014 recipient, Frances Henriquez, the first female city clerk. Gwendolyn Gwen Miller is the first African-American woman to have been elected to the Tampa City Council. She first served on the council for District 5 in April of 1995, collecting almost 60% of the votes cast. Interestingly, Gwen Miller is the first council person to follow a spouse onto the Tampa City Council. Her husband, Hillsborough County Commissioner Les Miller, served on the Tampa City Council in 1991. District 5, it was, it was my first time running, you know, I didn't, wasn't interested in politics at that time, but I was called helping my husband less run, and every campaign I helped him with, he would win. So people would say, if you can get your husband elected, why you can't get yourself elected? So that was a little inspiration for me then for District 5, and then living in District 5 and riding around and see so many things that need to be done in District 5, too helped me to make up my decision and say, yes, I'm going to run. Mrs. Miller was also the first African-American woman to serve as the chair of the Tampa City Council. She served with distinction on the council from 1995 through 2011, including her time as chair from 2003 through 2007, and chair pro tem from 1998 through 2003, and again from 2007 until her retirement in 2011. It's better now than it was because when I ran, there was not a lot of women in politics because women were just helping the husband and other people to run and get into office. But then we realized, like I say, if we can get them in office, we can put ourselves in office. And we knew just as much because we was drilling them on the, on the issues and what's happening in the city and the nation. And so now we have more women getting into politics than ever. But when I was on council, it was just two of us. And when I stayed on a longer, it came to be three and four of us. And so it's just getting better each year. During her time on Tampa City Council, Mrs. Miller served as the chair of the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Committee, vice chair of the Finance Committee, and a member of the Transportation Committee. She was dedicated to developing and strengthening youth and families through educational, recreational, and social opportunities. Mrs. Miller spearheaded many neighborhood initiatives, including funding for the renovation of the Belmont Little League and community centers for Woodlawn Terrace and Williams Park. If you're gonna run for office, you got to know what you're running for. You know, just to be run is not gonna help you. You got to have a goal and some ideas of why you're running. And the main thing is helping your community and the constituents to make your city a better place. A native of Tampa, Gwen Miller attended Middleton High School. She went on to earn her Bachelor of Science degree from Florida A&M University and attained a master's degree in education, also from Florida A&M. Prior to serving on the Tampa City Council, Mrs. Miller worked for 13 years as an elementary school teacher in Hillsborough County and another 24 years as the school district's human relations specialist. She fondly recalls being the school counselor to another Tampa woman of distinction. It was Mayor Pam Aureo. She was a ninth grader student. She came there, she had so much determination and, and she wanted to be so much and I just got close to her but stopped pushing her, pushing her to be the president of the student body. Put her in my, we call it the SAC, the student advisory committee. She became president of that. And then when she became mayor, that was really something. I'm working with the child I taught, the student I taught. Throughout her lifetime, Mrs. Miller has been greatly recognized for her efforts in the community. Some of the prestigious awards she has received include the Tampa Hillsboro Urban League Milestone Award, the Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Outstanding Service Award, the Distinguished Alumnus Award for her alma mater, Florida A&M University, 
and a 2012 induction into the Hillsborough County Women's Hall of Fame. In 2011, the Woodland Terrace Park Community Center in East Tampa was renamed the Gwendolyn Miller Community Center in her honor. I would like for people to remember me as a people person, person that was always there for them, person who was willing to help them, person who never said no to them, and whatever they wanted me to do, I was willing to do it and help them. And just remember I was a person that they really wanted there to be to serve them. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's recipient, the Honorable Gwendolyn Gwen Miller. Miss Miller, come stand by me. <laughs> I'm so proud of this lady. The video truly demonstrates that your life and your lifetime, you never let things happen because she found ways of relating to people, causes to conquer, and new interests to explore. In fact, just recently, Wynn was honored on the Florida State Fair Authority Community Leaders Wall of Fame. And her accomplishments continue. Les Miller, you ought to be very, very proud of this, <laughs> of this partner you have here. So will you uh, please join me to present the Josephine Howard Stafford Memorial Award. And I believe it's uh, Miss Little. Ms. Miller, if I may, as I was sitting there um, looking at your video, uh, several words came to mind, and if you don't mind, if you'll allow me to share what came to mind as I watched the video, and I jotted them down, wisdom, pioneer, legacy, inspiration. <laughs> Thank you for all that you have got done. Thank you for leading the way and creating a path for the women who follow and not doing it selfishly, doing it unselfishly. That being said, I, it's with great honor that I present this award in recognition of your outstanding contributions to your profession and our community, Gwendolyn Gwen Miller, City Council Member 1995 to 2011, the Josephine Howard Stafford Memorial Award, 19th Annual City of Tampa Women's History Month Celebration, March 18, 2015, signed by Mayor Bob Buckhorn. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for this honor. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge some people. I know he's been already acknowledged, but I'd like to acknowledge my husband again, County Commission Les Miller. <laughs> also, my aunt, Audrey Dawson, you stand. <laughs> my cousin, Karen Anderson, would you stand? And I have many friends out there, so I want to ask all of you all to stand to later. <laughs> I am humbled and honored 
to be receiving the Josephine Staff Award. I would like to offer my sincere gratitude to the City of Tampa Women's History Committee for this great honor. I must admit, I was a bit surprised when I heard that I was going to be the this year recipient of the Josephine Stafford Award. Tampa is so rich in history and especially in women history. And there were many that blazed many trails being one of the first. The award namesake Joseph Stafford was the first woman county judge. And she was a pioneer for women issues, both professional and in our community. The city's 55th mayor, Sandra Freeman, was the first female mayor. Catherine Bodger, who was the first woman elected to Tampa City Council. Frances Enrique, who was last year's recipient, was the Josephine Award, was the first woman for the first and the first Hispanic woman to be named uh, this award. Gilbertine Wright, former assistant chief of police, who at that time of her service was the highest ranking women in the history of the department. And I would like, I would be remiss if I didn't say Jane Casper. I wish <laughs> I'd see she's here. She is the first and the current police chief and is the first city female police chief. All of these women mentioned have been recipient of the Joe Stafford Award. And I am also pleased to be part of this wonderful group. Being honored as one of Tampa first is a real success. There are, there are and have been many great women making a difference in the lives of many. Many of these women are unsung. I realize that this award can't be, di be divided, so I symbolically stand and accept it on behalf of the great women of Tampa, the known and the unknown. When I was younger, I couldn't even imagine how interesting my life would have been. But as I always trusted my journey, and I, and I also, so many ways that I can count my journey as a blessing. Thanks to my colleagues along the way, including those in the school system, those that I serve with on council, the mayors that I worked with, and the many organizations that I have supported me and I served on. I've been afforded the grand opportunity to serve the great people of Tampa. Today's award is the symbol of that success. I want to recognize my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Will my sorrows please stand? I would like to recognize the daughter of Harold Coat number 96. Would you please stand? And the members of the Charm had incorporated, none are here, but most important, my church family, New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church members, would you please stand? <laughs> this community is very important to me, and I'm happy to see it grow and improve every day. Tampa has so much potential, and I'm glad to be to be able to see the future generation and care about our community as much as we have. It has been my pleasure to serve this community. Those who are married to elected officials or advocates might as well be branded with the sinners. When you serve, I serve. I can tell you from experience this statement is true because whenever I was, whenever I was so was my family. I want to express my gratitude to my family and especially to my husband, Les, who supported me in all of my undertakings. It is crucial to acknowledge the countless and everyday sacrifices that our loved one has made. I also want to thank everyone that I worked with along the way. This is our award because, as you know, and I both know, no one person can do it alone. There are so many lessons to learn, be learned throughout life. One is to serve and give back some way. Another lesson is to remember to celebrate those who help you along the way. Some of the people whose shoulders you stood on may forever remain nameless if you don't remember to celebrate them. Remember to trust your journey. Remember to celebrate yourself. 
Remember to make it better for the future generation. Remember that although faith makes things possible, it does not make it easy. I am very pleased to have received this award. Thank you for your choice and for your trust in me. God bless you. Congratulations again, Mrs. Miller, on your well-deserved award. Thank you for your past, present, and future service and contributions to the city of Tampa. I want to, uh, you to pay special attention to the beautiful tasks um, under the floral arrangements. They were made by Roberta Mead in honor of Mrs. Miller's um, sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha. Thank you. This morning, our keynote address will be delivered by a woman of great versatility, Dr. Phyllis Tucker Wicks, is an educator on both the secondary and adult levels, a public speaker and published author. Her extensive accomplishments in higher education include a Bachelor of Arts in English Education, master's degree in educational leadership, and a doctoral degree in child and youth studies with a specialization in curriculum development. Dr. Tucker Wicks currently teaches advanced and regular eighth grade language arts at Sly Middle Magnet School and is an adjunct professor at Hillsborough Community College. She has also served as a mentor and advisor for doctoral students in the dissertation process at Nova Southeastern University. She is on many professional committees for education and is the owner of Blessed Productions, which is named after her son, Jeremiah Blessed Wicks. Her accolades are extensive to say the least, with recognition as who's who among America's teachers in 1995, 1996, and 2002. Role model ambassador for Little Rock, Arkansas, presented by then Governor Bill Clinton, and she toured as Miss Black Florida and held the title of Miss Black America, to say, to name just a few. We're excited to have her here today. So please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Dr. Phyllis Tucker Wicks. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Giving honor to God, to the mayor in his absence, and to all of our honorees, and all of you in your respectful places. I thank you for inviting me here to share some words on this 19th annual Women's History Month celebration. The theme, Weaving the Stories of Women's Lives, is very intriguing since in the early 1800s, women were second class citizens. Women were expected to restrict their sphere of interest to the home and the family. Women were not encouraged to obtain a real education or pursue a, a professional career. Women did not have the right to own their own property after marriage. Women could not keep their own wages or sign a contract. In addition, all women were denied the right to vote. In the 1930s, Claire Booth Lutz once said, because I am a woman, if I fail, no one would say she doesn't have what it takes. They would say women don't have what it takes. But this year, in the year 2015, I say, because we are women, we cannot fail. And therefore, it should be said that we have what it takes and take what we have and weave the stories 
of our lives to make a dynamic culture that draws strength from each other and make our men stand up and our children stand out. Ayn Rand said, the question isn't who's going to let me, but who's going to stop me? <laughs> Women don't wear their wishbone where their backbone ought to be. A man's got to do what a man's got to do, but a woman's got to do what he can't do for himself. <laughs> God himself, God himself showed his love for women when he allowed his only son to come from a woman's womb. He also said, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. He said, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. He didn't say that about a woman. <laughs> we all know that when women cook the food, the whole household is happy. We also know that when a woman goes down on her knees to pray, the whole house is at peace. When a woman becomes a mother, the bond cannot be broken. When children go off to college and they call back home and daddy answers the phone, they say, hello, daddy, can I speak to mama? <laughs> Now let's begin to weave the stories. Did Elizabeth Fry lose any of her feminine qualities by the public walk into which she was called? Between the 17 and 1800s, Fry was a major driving force behind new legislation to make the treatment of prisoners more humane. Did Dorothea Dix lose any of her feminine qualities by the public walk into which she was called? In the early 1800s, Dix was an American activist on behalf of the indigent insane who through a vigorous program of lobbying state legislatures and the United States Congress created the first generation of American mental asylums. During the Civil War, she served as superintendent of army nurses. Did Grace Darling lose any of her feminine qualities by the public walk into which she was called? In the early 1800s, she was an English lighthouse keeper's daughter who participated in the rescue of survivors where nine members of a crew were saved when their boat capsized. Did Joan of Arc lose any of her feminine qualities by the public walk into which she was called? Arc led the French army to victory over the British at Orleans at 18. Did Harriet Tubman lose any of her feminine qualities when she made about 13 missions to rescue approximately 70 enslaved families and friends through the Underground Railroad and never lost a passenger. Did Oprah Gail Winfrey lose any of her feminine qualities when she became an American media proprietor, talk show host, actress, producer, philanthropist, and billionaire owner of her own television network. Did Gwendolyn M. Miller lose any of her feminine qualities when she served four terms on the city council for which she was the first African-American woman elected? Did Michelle LaVon Robinson Obama lose any of her feminine qualities when she became an American writer, lawyer, and first lady to the current 44th president of the United States of America. No, the only thing lost was time. Time that the long thread of women had to wait for their rights to pass through the eye of a needle to seal their position in history. When women weave their stories together, they create a masterpiece of literature where each can create her own diary of a bad black, white, or red woman. When her feet are used to run for justice, her knees are used to pray for peace. When her hips are in much needed rest, she keeps running when the pain in her back increase. And when her neck needs a massage for pain and she finds that there's no one there, she uses her own fingers and arms for massage and initiates her own repair. So when women weave their stories together and you connect the dots, you're looking at an adventure in a maze in which makes for an incredible plot because when that toe bone's connected to the foot bone and that foot bone's connected to the ankle bone 
And that ankle bone's connected to the leg bone. And that leg bone is connected to the knee bone. And that knee bone is connected to the thigh bone. And that thigh bone is connected to the hip bone. And that hip bone is connected to the back bone. And that back bone's connected to the neck bone. And the neck bone's connected to the head bone. Women become unstoppable. Yes, women have cornered the job market. Every thread has been sewn, and whatever job wasn't in the market, women created their own. Now, I didn't come here to upset the men, because <laughs> God has blessed them as well. It's just that the biggest blessing you've got is respectfully called a female. So my sisters, my mothers, my daughters, please remember this. It's not what you gather, but what you scatter that tells what kind of life you have lived. Miss Angelo made it audible when she wrote to tell you that you are simply phenomenal. She said, pretty woman, wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. It's the fire in my eyes and the flesh of my teeth and the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. I walk into a room just as cool as you please and to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. Men have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I should try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile. It's the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about, or I have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels. It's the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. So phenomenal women, weaving the stories of women's lives, we have arrived. Thank you. Was that excellent or what? Let's give her another round. You were so inspiring and encouraging, and thank you for that. Appreciate it so much. This has been a wonderful program. Thank you to all the program participants, sponsors, MacDill Air Force Base, and the Women's History Planning Committee for their work in making this celebration a success. I'd like to recognize the Women History Month committee members Ladies, would you please stand for a round of applause. <laughs> During the month of March, you can help women re-entering the workforce. As part of the Women's History Month, clean, uh, clean gently worn suits, work attire, and accessories are being collected for the Dress for Success program. You may drop off your donations throughout the month of March at the Columbus Municipal Office Building, the Construction Services Center on North Boulevard, the Tampa Municipal Office Building on the fifth floor, and the Solid Waste Department. Please support this worthy cause that helps women transition back into the workforce. Also, on your way out, please view the women's history display in the lobby. The display will remain in the mascot room located on the first floor of Old City Hall building during the month of March for additional viewing. 
You are invited to a small reception in the Sister Cities and City Archives showroom next to the mascot room immediately after the program. We hope you will take the spirit of this celebration with you throughout the month and the year ahead. Again, what a wonderful program. Everything was simply outstanding. The history lessons, the great women recognized, the fellowship, and of course, our great speaker were all wonderful. Congratulations again to our honoree, Mrs. Gwen Miller. We celebrate you. We also celebrate many other women and thank them for the many sacrifices that we may never know about and the examples they set. Thank you for not giving up when the going got tough. Thank you for being you and for your unconditional love for all of us. Let us all pay it for it by being that light for others. This is the time to celebrate women's contributions to society and history that normally go unnoticed. There are many women making an impact in our community. We are living in some exciting times. We have a wonderful history and one to be cherished. We celebrate our diversity in our great city and recognize that we are standing on the shoulders of many other women that have come before us. Thank you again for the opportunity to serve and to be here at this moment in time. I also want to take a moment to recognize the individuals that made the display. Uh, Mr. Dave Fredericks. Dave, would you please stand? He's also our photographer. <laughs> Dave works in the Archives and Records Division of the City Clerk's Office. Also want to recognize Stephanie Thomas also making a collage for uh, Miss Miller. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, the City Clerk's Office and the Archives and Records Division and all the people that really put their heart into making this program a success, along with all of you. <laughs> Thank you again for the opportunity to serve and to be here at this moment in time. Please have a wonderful day.